Hello and welcome to this episode of DC Breakdown where we take D&D live plays and we break them down. This episode we're breaking down Escape from the Blood Keep, episode three. With these breakdowns, you don't have to have watched it beforehand, but I definitely recommend to check out Dimension 20 and all of their stuff they have over there. Escape from the Blood Keep is six players who are evil villain players who maybe aren't so evil, but we'll see that in the finale. And in this episode is maybe my most favorite NPC that Brennan Lee Mulligan has ever ran. It's hilarious. I want to literally just put this NPC in my game, but it would make no sense because it's just too perfect like it is. But before we get into it, this video is sponsored by this mini from Fry Minis who painted Alcander from Alcander's Almanac of all things. Check that out. I am joking though. This is not a sponsored video. This is a friend from the channel, Eric, who painted Alcander from Alcander's Almanac of all things in a little collaboration we did. I am not the best painter. He is, as you can tell, and just look at this thing. So in a cool collaboration, he painted this for me in the release of Alcander's Almanac of All Things, and I have actual Alcander now. Sits at my table with me every day. And if you want Alcander with you every day, then Alcander's Almanac of All Things has released. It's official. The PDF is live now on my website if you can check it out. It's just the PDF on my website. But if you want the hardcover book, you only have a couple days left until the end of this month, July 31st. I'm only doing one print run of the hardcover, so you can see the hardcover in the link in the description and the PDF in the link in the description, two separate links. And check out Fry Mini's YouTube channel and to see how he painted this thing. He has a whole video on his channel watching how he painted this thing and many more things. My God, it's so cool. Let's get back to the video. So for this first clip, I'm gonna do something I've never done before. I'm gonna show you a behind the scenes of Brendan Lee Mulligan himself talking about from the Dungeon Master's perspective, what was going on in his head when the players did this thing. So what happened in the episode was the players were supposed to go, they needed to reforge this crown, the their fallen evil <laughs> villain lord. They needed to reforge this crown and somebody needed to take up the mantle of the, the big evil guy. So they need to reforge this crown, but time out. Brennan has a very specific six episodes to do this in, and every other episode is a battle scene. There is one battle scene inside the lava pit, one battle scene on a skyship, and one battle scene, spoiler alert, deep down underground, right, for the episode six finale. They're in episode three right now, and he knows in episode four, the entire episode is the battle on a skyship. And this is where the conversation of railroad versus sandbox and all that kind of stuff goes in. This would be a whole video, but you have to think as a dungeon master, where are my players going, where's the story going, and what? how can I get them there in some way with the players still being in charge of this whole thing? So then out of nowhere, Matt Mercer rolls a natural 20 in this moment. Any of you guys actually can feel free to go ahead and make just like a flat intelligence check. Okay. Seeing if the players know where they're going to go, try and... Natural 20. Natural 20. Right. Matt Mercer, yeah. natural 20. So it's adding... 22 total. So now Brennan knows that he has to get them to the skyship. He has this natural 20. Oh my gosh, they know something. I can really run with this. He's one going to tell them about an NPC in some far off land that they're going to have to call a sky ship to travel to because he knows that one of the players has a sky ship. He's trying to bait one of the players into getting the sky ship. This is great. Also, for the record, this is not just me hypothesizing this. This is from a Brennan in a clip that I'll show in a second to see the big picture of what's going on and how he pulled the strings. Way north of here, beyond Gorgar, back in Karad Kar, in the fortress deep in all this made up haunted woods uh that there were a number of oubliettes prison cells that people were meant to be thrown into locked and forgotten about and you used to throw a lot of elves in there way back in the day when you guys were riding further afield and the armies were way farther than just Gorgar. um that there is a sort of high mountain elf from like this cloud citadel of crown smiths Meta. and mithril armorers there was this guy named avanash avanash uh, made avanash uh look at the right uh, was one of the people that had a small piece of crown lore so this npc is completely made up avanash the it's crown forger oh my gosh what what <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Absolutely made up, okay? But Brennan's now talking about, so now I'm gonna have them go and they're gonna travel here and then I get them on the skyship. Perfect, awesome. But three minutes later from this clip, Lilith, one of the Spider Queen villain characters, decides to cast Tree Stride essentially and teleport them from through the webs and through all of her webbing across the world to that location. And, and Brennan did not see that come and they get to teleport there immediately. So here's the clip breakdown of of Brennan telling this story and then we'll show what happens from there. That's amazing and one of my favorite moments. So I love that it was improv. Here we go. So here's what I did. I saw 
uh, Matt do his thing where he's like, I roll a nat 20 on this Arcana check. I know the next fight has to happen on the siren. So what I do is I say, there's a guy in Karadkar who knows how to make a crown, thinking Marcus is going to jump on his stone, call the siren for you guys to go to Karadkar, oh. and the fight's going to happen on the siren. And uh, and who knows if you'll ever make it to Karadkar once the fight on the siren starts. Maybe the ship survives, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it survives, but only enough to land the ground for repairs who knows right um uh so uh, uh i'm like great got it and then old lilith goes oh this i've got lilith. an infinite distance teleportation spell we can all go and that's a moment as a dm where you get to say what you're really made out <laughs> because because uh because an amateur dm will go no the game's called escape from the blood keep i'm not gonna let you escape from the blood keep yet or you go huh well, fuck me. <laughs> and you fully improvise a place you never intended to go, and the things see. that are there, and an entire character named Avanash that you pull fully out of your butt. Just <laughs> right there. So there you go. Avanash, this character that I'm going to show you here in a second, completely made up, very strange and weird, but... Don't you know it? The NPCs that we come up with on the fly and make up out of nowhere are some of the best. And actually, I already filmed the video for this, so this, in two weeks on the channel, I have a whole video about how to make memorable NPCs very quickly on the fly. So this is a perfect example of that, but Brennan doing a, a masterful job of that. Which is actually the next clip. Brennan's gonna be role-playing Avanash in this way and gets real weird, but real funny. This character basically is trapped underwater and he's worried about his bones leaving his body. I'll show you the clip so you have some contents, then we'll break down how you can make NPCs like this one. So here we are, they're about to hand the crown and the schematics and what they need this crown forger to make. Um, you see that uh, Avanash looks up and says, well, I'm looking at that, that looks like a standard um, magical crown, it looks sort of similar to your circlet here, which is great. Um, I should be able to bang that out, no problem. Um, I guess my only... Larry, I would raise is how are you going to um, keep my bones? I beg your pardon, I don't quite understand. Will you keep them or what? will the river take them? Oh, um, can you elaborate? So, again. Hello, <laughs> hello. <laughs> just uh, hang on just a moment, please. Okay. Uh, I've said enough, but I think I'm in my position is clear. So I think. <laughs> Sorry, am I being unclear? I'm worried about my bones. Right. What I do know. you. What, is, what do your bones have to do? Are you. Them? What? I think you're fully talking to a great. I think you would be have better luck Go talking to this great, wall great, great, great. than we would. Uh, uh, I think we bring Percival in here and we have I'll, a little I'll, tent I will take care of your bones. I'll be the watcher of bones. I got your bones on. I mean, I am. I I have a bone that I love very much. Why do we think this guy can do anything? I feel like. Brennan just took this opportunity of like, wow, okay, this guy, this is weird. Okay, I'm in the water. This NPC is in the water. Okay, and then just something latched onto bones and wanting to keep his bones safe. The irrational fear of the person being isolated alone for so long. He wants to make sure that no one takes his bones. So there's the big picture I wanted to show you guys of knowing as a dungeon master where you want the players to go. Where's the story going? Now I know there's a difference between sandbox and railroad, but I've learned this lesson the hard way that sometimes if you're too sandboxy, the story just starts floating around and players don't know what to do and everything starts getting weird. So you do need to have some sort of rails once the players make a decision to let's go this way. Let's put some rails on that so they can start heading that direction. Especially at Dimension 20 because they have thousands of dollars invested into these custom built sets that they need to use next episode. Now I know that's not true for our tables, but we do have certain story beats that we want our players to go to and we can think of and be creative like this to be able to throw out options. But in this exact example, it doesn't always go according to plan. We think that, all right, cool, I'll, I'll say something about a far off person. They'll get the sky ship, fly there, mission accomplished, great. Right? But, ooh, wait a second. They bypass everything with this web travel spell that I did not think of that the player had, and they immediately teleport there. Wow, okay, great. And we now are gonna bring it to the next little point here where they have now been here. They talked to this NPC, they need to get back. How are they gonna get back? So, and what would usually break the rules as far as how long a spell lasts is they realize like she burned this big spell slot to travel here. How are we gonna get back? Oh, wait a second. 
Brennan allows them hand waves at this moment for pacing reasons, for storytelling reasons, and lets them use the same portal that they used like an hour ago. The spell totally would not have been able to be used because too much time has passed, but Brennan hand waves it and says, yeah, you can totally use the same portal to get back, which this is a pacing thing. It's fine. No, it's fine. As a dungeon master, focus on the things you want to focus about. Be hard on those things, but be lax on other things. The spell totally would not have been able to be used because too much time has passed, but Brennan hand waves it and says, yeah, you can totally use the same portal to get back, which this is a pacing thing it's fine no it's fine as a dungeon master focus on the things you want to focus about be hard on those things but be lax on other things it just helps the whole pacing and story keep going especially with the context of this so now we're over halfway through this episode and they still haven't gotten on the skyship and there's no hope of it looking like that right now so Brennan throws out this whole situation. They are, they've traveled back now, they're moving around, but he knows that he doesn't want them to use this travel spider web spell again. So he was really light on them whenever he wanted them to be able to move around, but very hard on them now with what he says here. I'm gonna go ahead and say, um, uh, Eric, I'll make a deal with you uh, to make this spell yes. less. Um, so uh, let's, I'll say that if you don't wanna burn a spell slot, I'm bringing everyone back here, it's totally fine. You guys can just walk back through, but I'm gonna say X out transport via web for the rest of the day. Cool. Yes. Um, uh, so that's now like unprepared. Mm. Um, uh, oh, very nice. So now they can't just long rest and get the spell slot back and then go back and then, then teleport again because she can just teleport anywhere. He has now removed that off the list, right? A very interesting, and, and especially knowing the context of he has to get them to a skyship to be able to have episode four breakdown. Stay tuned for that one. I'll do that one next week. But that's the big picture here. And he's trying to now sl slice it through, allowing them to use it, but taking it off the table. This next roll is done in true Brennan Lee Mulligan fashion. I call these hype rolls. I put these in Alcanor's Almanac as some sort of system to be able to establish and get this type of feeling at your table. And this is a perfect, literal perfect example of doing this, is there's a check that's about to be made. The NPC is doing it. So it doesn't always have to be done towards players where you say things towards players roles. You are about to make a roll as an NPC see and it means a lot i'm about to roll this out in front of the table and you really set the stage for what these numbers mean because a lot of times if i say dc is 25 and then you roll it you don't know what the numbers are and sometimes people aren't really that good at mental math and if it's a plus eight then what's that number if they roll the 15 then what's a plus eight does that hit the you know what i'm saying so a lot of times you want to subtract it down so whatever the dc is subtract off the modifiers this is the number you need to see on the literal dice in front of you here we go this roll is for Avanash, the crazy bones <laughs> crown smith, about to see if he can forge this thing or not. Uh, you see, he uh, looks over. Um, he's gonna roll with advantage. He gets a plus 10 to his check, um, uh, but the DC is 25. Um, so, uh, but he's rolling with advantage. Uh, any other PC shenanigans before I roll? Any DC's other PC 25, he has a plus 10. What cool. is the, what is the check? Um, the check he's making is a, a tool proficiency. Um, uh, so, uh, but he's gonna roll, he's got a plus 10 to the roll, he's very good, so he's just gotta roll a 15 or higher. And I will say this, he's gotta roll, uh, he's gotta roll 15 or higher. The DC for not ruining the crown is 20. So there we go. as long as he, so in other words, he can like, try again if he doesn't okay. like destroy the materials. Okay. So if he rolls, he has to roll a 15 or higher to make it. If he rolls both rolls under 10, uh, it's destroyed. Yeah, you gotta, gotta, go. gotta go kill some other so, guy. <laughs> I will say. And as you see there at the end, Marcus chimes in because Brennan said at the beginning, is there any sort of checks anybody wants to make? Any sort of other PC shenanigans y'all want to do? And then he goes into setting the stage and expectations because you don't want to ask that question. Anybody got something super creative? No? All right, here we go. He asks it, then takes some time to set the stage. I do the same thing in combat. What does anybody want to do with this? This is happening, this is happening. I do the same thing in combat. What are y'all thinking about this? Is anybody want to do something here's what's going on and then i go into an explanation right so as a dungeon master ask that creative option put that out on the table and then he goes into the description of what's going on sets the stage of he's got to roll a 15 or higher to make the crown 10 or higher to not break it but anything below a 10 the, it is broken and gone the one thing that I would clarify in this that I would do differently is the one time where Brennan said he could just try again. In these moments, I would not reference the hypothetical future of being able to try again. I wouldn't reference that. I would let it be clear through the stipulations of 15 and up, he makes it. 10 and up, he doesn't make it, but at least the materials aren't destroyed. And that's all I would say. I would not mention anything about he could just try again because that takes a little bit of air out of the pressure and tension. Is it, Oh, he can just try again. It really doesn't matter. It takes a little bit off of it, right? So that's the one little thing I would take 
take out. But then underneath that is where the tension builds back in. But if he rolls below a 10 twice, everything's destroyed. And all of that exposition was able to give enough time for Marcus to chime in and say something, another character to chime in and say something, and get let people have that time clock to think more. So how does Brennan do it? How does he get them on the skyship for this next episode? Here we go. We are at one hour and 58 minutes into this clip here. Time's up. These episodes are two hours long. He's got to make it happen. So he pulls the trigger hard. And it's really interesting to see this now. This is my second or third time watching these things. And it's really interesting to know that this was the issue now and see how he's trying to pull the strings to make this happen. He has set some, they're at the blood keep now in the, the section you didn't see here. They have the crown, they're at the blood keep and stuff goes south. Everyone's trying, they get reported to be traitors and all this kind of stuff. And now there's people attacking. They got to leave. They got to get out of here. Brennan again, poking them at how you're going to leave. Marcus, the, the, the player Marcus, does not call in his skyship, does not go that way. So Brennan pulls the trigger for him. There's some other things and other things that like led that way and that was on the table. But Brennan, Brennan goes hardcore with this, asks everybody for a perception check, and here we go. Lilith and especially uh, Marcus, you guys both look outside as this, you're talking about like, like find the crown, defend the blood keep, or like go to the side of good. Um, you see... Descent, you two see descending from the clouds, the siren pulls up out of the clouds. <laughs> we back, baby. We back. Get it ready, baby. We back. Oh, wait, Marcus, explain. Oh, my flying ship is here. Um, uh, the siren is supposed to be at Tor Kellen. It it is a direct contradiction of your orders that it is here. Um, but you see that it lands and starts to like batten down and tie itself to uh, to the port at the outside of the tower. There we go, masterfully done. All the way to the end when the ship rides, he talks to the NPC about what's going on. We got to get on here, and he has set a fire for them to run, given them a solution with things to set up the episode four, and they all play into it, all go along with it, and that's also them being good players under the context of this as well. This is not all purely on Brennan's shoulders. It should be on the players as well to understand, like, all right, cool, we're trying to see what's going on here. Let's go. And honestly, this video makes me want to do a full video on the concept of this railroad and how it gets a it gets a bad rap when really it's not it's just a storytelling device to be able to have a direction your players chose and then give some sort of story embedded rails along that story which i'll get into all that later if you like these videos share some love hitting that like button check out the other ones i got going on here i make these every week now because you guys have said in all the comments and stuff how much you love them i'm gonna do this whole series and then go into critical role and start bapping around all over the place so check out patreon for any other dm tools i try and give you dm tips and advice in these videos you get literal physical DM tools in the PDFs that I make every single month on Patreon. Alcanor's Almanac out now for even more the most jam-packed rules and tools all in one book. So until next time, stay creative. Think outside the box. Peace.